Saving you minutes when you are. So each five minutes. Fifteen five. <laughs> when you are missing fifteen. Fifteen yeah. minutes left. Okay. Five minutes yeah, left, yeah. Five minutes left. Then. Cool. Uh, and then also, when um, answering questions, just repeat them. Repeat them. The yep. Yep. Got it. Okay, so we're not gonna sit here. It's only gonna be there. Yep. The keys work. It just doesn't reflect. Yes. 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 Okay, so we have uh, Dmitri Marshall and Marcus Sigla Sigl right? Maya? Please forgive me. <laughs> Uh, they're going to be talking about the portable graphics abstraction in Rust. Um, please give them a warm welcome. Where are you connected? Do you see me? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dmitry Malosho, a graphics engineer at Mozilla. I work in Firefox Web Render, and before that, I worked in the AA game dev industry which inspired me to start uh, writing a graphics abstraction layer in Rust. And this is Marcus, uh, who joined us recently to rewrite it. And that's what we are going to talk about. <laughs> the idea is to have a single abstraction layer um, to run on all the platforms that we have. Um, unfortunately, uh, the graphics API have been branched out. We have Microsoft uh, pushing the DirectX 12 in the Windows ecosystem, and we have Apple pushing for Metal. Um, everything else is uh, adopting Vulkan quite successfully, uh, including the Android, the most popular oper operating system. Um, and uh, OpenGL is still alive as well. And we want all of those to be available through a single interface in Rust that is hopefully safe and fast. It started in uh, 2014, and uh, the legend is we had three threads at the beginning, and then we were fast-tracking through the evolution of the APIs as the native APIs did. So first we got command buffers, we got rid of the threads, and then we followed with resource views, pipeline states, uh, eventually getting the D3D11 and Metal backends. Um, and then somewhere around 2017, when we started first talks about integrating into WebRender, it appeared to us that um, even though we already had the uh, core layer split out of the uh, higher level rendering, we still weren't zero cost enough. So we decided to go lower level. We decided to implement uh, the core to be completely zero cost. And that's where Marcus comes in. This is the main um, roadmap of um, our work. And if you are taking one thing from our talk, then that should be this slide, I believe. Uh, at the center, you see hardware abstraction layer. That's our new core. That's the name of the new core. It's a um, Vulkan-like Rust API, very low level, quite unsafe, um, that different graphics backends implement, including Vulkan Metal, D312, and OpenGL. These are the backends that we already have now. And we are getting D3D11 soon enough as well. Um, the clients of the hardware abstraction layer are many. Uh, aside from the user apps, we have the Vulkan portability layer, which we are talking about uh, a little bit later. We have the Warden test framework to ensure no regressions in the graphics tests. And we have a WebGPU prototype. Um, based on Servo that's using that. A little bit more about the Warden test framework. It consists of um, three parts. First one is we are able to describe um, graphics resources and passes in readable uh, source, which we use the Rusty object notation for. Um, it says, here's my images, buffers, Here's what I'm going to do this th with them in the following passes. And then we, have, we can um, load it all uh, with a particular graphics backend so that it instantiates the resources on the GPU and creates the command buffers to implement passes. 
And then we have a ref test framework, which has sim very simple ref test defined and um, it runs the graphics passes uh, on the specific backends, compares the expectations with the tests. This is uh, an example of the resources. We have an image with a specified format and uh, dimensions. We have a render pass with one attachment and one sub pass, just as an example of roughly how it looks. Uh, this is the contents of the pass. We have the setting the viewports, the pipeline, and drawing a single, uh, re a single triangle. Okay, so then why we want to actually use Rust instead of, for example, C++? Um, there are a few nice bits of Rust um, compared to the basic concurrency, um, all const, new features like pattern matching. Um, there's SandSync, which um, basically um, tells you that every object in our API is SandSync, so you can access it from all threads and concurrently. And um, there's also immu immutability, which we use to um, say, for example, you can um, change this object or you can't. And it also encodes if um, you need to um, externally enforce um, single access, because, for example, some objects can only be um, accessed on one thread or at one time. So um, if you have if you see mutable access, you usually indicates that you need to um, externally synchronize your object. Then traits and associated types, which we use quite heavily, which, we use, which you will see later on. And we split all the things into multiple repositories. Um, for example, one repository is the hardware extraction layer, and then for each backend, we have an additional repository and for it. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> so what we are currently missing is, for example, non-exhaustive enums, which um, are basically required as we also provide a higher level abstraction um, for this Vulkan portability implementation. And there are cases where um, Vulkan could um, return us enum values which we not really know at the current time of implementing, which could come from a um, future driver which would return us this new enum values. Then struct alignments in shaders, which um, it happens every day that we misalign some shader struct because um, there's um, one page of Vulkan specification which basically says how you need to align your fields, and it's usually um, you do something wrong there. Then const generics, which would give us the possibility to um, use arrays, fixed size arrays, more um, more often in the library interface. We basically um, expose a quite generic interface using into iterator, but um, yeah. Fixed sized um, errors would help quite a lot for the user side to um, look a bit better. And exclusive cargo features. Um, at the moment, you could, something, uh, could do something like um, I want DX12 and Vulkan to um, run at the same time somehow, but it usually will mess up here, and you usually only want um, DX12 or um, Vulkan. <coughs> So the backend trite is our main interface. It's one large trite you have to, uh, have to implement if you want to implement a backend. <laughs> we basically um, divide it into dispatchable objects like the device or the command queue, which um, you can um, call functions on. And the basic resources like shaders, um, a buffer image, which you usually just pass around and create and delete. So for the roadmap 2018, 
um, we would like to become a Mozilla um, project because we want to integrate into web render and also into the web GPU part, which will Dimitri will talk about. And one side project is um, Vulkan Portability. It's an initiative um, from Vulkan, uh, from Kronos, where they try to um, do all the three, three um, backends, Vulkan, DX12, and Metal, and provide one RPE subset from the Vulkan API, which can map to all these three um, backends. And our goal is to implement um, the Vulkan portability layer using our hardware abstraction layer. And we currently can um, already pass a few examples like triangles or pipeline example from um, common samples, from Vulkan samples. And we are aiming at um, implementing or hooking up the Vulkan conformance test. Yeah. We can, um, we try to hook up the Vulkan conformance test suite and run, uh, run the tests against our um, hardware exception layer. Um, that's how it looks from our side. We basically have our hardware abstraction layer on the bottom, which is the DFRS side, and on the top we have the portability layer, and you can in, um, interface it using a driver um, inter implementation or using a static library um, if you want to directly link it, link it from a C library. Okay. So a little bit more information about what WebGPU is. Um, it's a W3C working group, uh, which Microsoft, Apple, uh, Mozilla, and Google are part of, and as well as a lot of independent actors, that is trying to design a new API um, to provide newer, uh, lower level concepts onto the web for faster interactive applications on the web. And there's been a lot of discussions over what the next gen API is going to be. Uh, and we, I'm a part of the group, and we don't seem to have a lot to agree on so far. Mm -hmm. um, everyone is uh, sort of pushing in a different direction. So our position there is to have something either exactly like Vulkan or very close to Vulkan. Um, and, um, Based on that, um, we developed a prototype uh, that is using Servo, but adding a new um, <laughs> web ideal based API um, that has basically Vulkan calls in it. So you can like, go that low level and uh, create your pipeline barriers and descriptors on the web using JavaScript or WebAssembly uh, and run it in the browsers, which in the browser, which is currently a very specific fork of Servo. Um, our future plans with the web GPU include trying to get a native application um, transcompiling to the web using WebAssembly. Um, so a native application using Vulkan to be compiled using WebAssembly for the web on the browser, so that it just runs in the browser, so that you don't need to learn a new API that you can just use uh, Vulkan on the web. Now a little bit more about the ecosystem that we have. And since we seem to have a lot more time left, that we're going to start on each of them closely. Um, there is a few engines in Rust at the moment. None of them is mature enough, um, but they're very promising, uh, namely Good Game Easy, Amethyst and 3RS. Um, all of those use the older JeffXRS at the moment, where Amethyst is already transitioning towards the new hardware abstraction layer. It's extremely promising to us since they not only um, are porting to the hardware abstraction layer, they're bringing, bringing uh, the higher levels for us to use. For example, um, a library that manages memory for you so that you don't have to care about uh, particular memory types that the driver exposes. You just say, oh, I want this buffer, and the library handles the actual 
uh, heap management and uh, allocation of the memory um, from the driver for you. Or a frame graph sort of thing, which uh, allows you to describe all your graphics workload as one big graph, uh, which is then automatically deriving the dependencies, the memory barriers for you, and possibly schedules it to run on multiple hardware queues for execution in parallel. Um, so this is what Amethyst folks are bringing on the table, and um, I'm sure Good Game Easy and 3RS will follow and uh, use hardware abstraction layer uh, in 2018. Other than that, we have a very interesting plans with Volcano as um, a project that we are often being compared to. In fact, uh, now the comparison doesn't make much sense because we are lower level. We are implementing Vulkan and Volcano is based on Vulkan. So what we want to do is to uh, let users use Volcano on top of GFX hardware abstraction layer. So in a sense, it, it's a drop-in replacement. The users will not need to do anything, and they will instantly get access to um, Apple and Microsoft platforms, potentially Xbox One as well. Um, so that's something that we are working on right now. And finally, WebRender is a Mozilla research project that is currently being integrated into Firefox. It is in need of um, better control of the latency resources and um, more direct access on Windows platforms for, for example, playing a video efficiently. So uh, our Vulkan portability or graphic abstraction layer makes perfect sense to be a part of WebRender. And uh, we are already working on that. We have a group um, in uh, Zagat University in Hungary that's porting WebRender. And they have uh, an exciting uh, progress so far. So they translate the shaders automatically, and they already, rust, uh, they already run our ref test framework. So we're looking forward to see WebRender uh, running on HAL uh, this year, <laughs> potentially upstreamed as well to Firefox. And uh, we have a very lively uh, Gitter chat, which does not have a link here. Uh, but we have also a blog post, and uh, you can just jump on the project page on GitHub, and it will have all the links that you've, uh, you will ever need. Um, we are always happy to answer your questions. And uh, right now, I'm going to run a demo that Marcus have reading, written. The demo features quite a few compute shaders and some rendering as well. And um, it's fairly complex. It simulates ocean water. And it runs exactly the same on D312, Metal, and Vulkan, using the same shaders and the same API calls. So that is it. Um, ready for questions? So the question is, why do we consider it a zero-cost abstraction layer? Um, it's zero-cost in a sense that if you want to, it to be backed by Vulkan, then we don't do any um, heap allocations, and we don't do any smart pointers uh, management for you. It has explicit like allocation and free calls for resources. Of course, uh, there is certain warts that we have to do in order for the same API to run on D312 and uh, Metal. So this is not exactly zero cost in that sense. This is as low cost as we can afford, but this, is, this goes in line not in our own reasoning, but more in line of uh, the Vulkan Portability technical subgroup and uh, the design that we're doing as a part of the group. So it's very little minimum overhead. We can't afford any um, extra GPU work for whatever we are doing. Uh, 
Uh, is your question that we are losing quite a bit of command buffers in metal? Okay, so the question is how do we deal with the performance loss from not being able to reuse command buffers in metal? That is very unfortunate, and um, what Molten VK is doing as uh, one of our uh, competitors technically is uh, having a, like a software list of commands built up independent of the hardware list. So um, I don't think we have that implemented right now, but that's the plan right now. Yes. Are there any plans for the graphical UI toolkit? Um, we are extremely busy with making sure that the hardware abstraction layer, like the lowest level of abstraction works, and um, our next steps are more um, in terms of getting the like frame graph sort of libraries or the memory management libraries solid before we can think about the UI. However, um, I expect Conrad to be able to be ported on JFX HAL eventually. Uh, it's a graphical UI toolkit for uh, Rust, as well as um, our friendly Amethyst folks are likely to come up with something too. So we hope for your help. So historically, before the rewrite, we required, we required, sorry, the question was, how do we handle shaders with regards to different platforms? Um, uh, historically, we required the users to provide all the shaders for the backends that they use, like separate shaders for Metal, OpenGL, and D3.11. After the, the rewrite, as we are going for the Vulkan portability goal, we only accept PRV. And from SPRV, we generate all the backend specific shaders. Uh, we patch the logic like coordinate systems and descriptors IDs according to the specifics of the backend that we are uh, translating the shader into. Uh, we're using the SPRV cross as like a helper library to do that. And our far future far plans would be to have a Rust alternative to that as well, since that's the biggest uh, non-Rust component that we use right now. So right now, you supply your shaders in SPRV. Of course, the most convenient way to do that would be to write it in GLSL, um, say, 4.1, and then have them convert it using GLSL to SPRV. That's what Warden Test Framework is doing, at least. You write your shaders in like GLSL and test them against SPRV. So the question, the question is how does WebGPU is going to expose Vulkan given that WebGL is way higher level? So yes, it's a hard question. And Vulkan is a hard sell for multiple of reasons on the web, uh, not only because it's low level, but all the consequences from it is like it's easy to build a user signature based on what you query about the, what device can do. And on the web, it's not safe. And there's a whole lot of concerns that not only make not only Vulkan, but in general, going any low level on the graphic side to slightly start breaking the rules of the web. So we're trying to find our philosophy there, and uh, uh, our priority is getting like the maximum performance of the web.